Not too long ago, the Washington football team released Dwayne Haskins, their first round pick back in 2019. And then a month or so later, they released 2020 NFL Comeback Player of the Year, Alex Smith. So now the best quarterback on their roster is Kyle Allen, even though they have Heineke listed as the starter on their depth chart. Regardless, they have the lowest overall starting quarterback in the league. So I figured why not give these guys some help. Now, I know a lot of you guys play Mutt, and sometimes you don't feel like grinding to get the best team. So if you wanna just buy some training or coins or players, head on over to muttreserve.com. Use my code CK, and not only will you be rich one day, but you'll also get 15% off your order. So in this video, I'm pretty much helping out the teams with the lowest overall starting quarterbacks by giving them the best wide receivers and tight ends. So the football team gets the top two, and that's Devontae, who's a 99 overall, and DeAndre Nuke Hopkins, also a 99 overall. They no longer have Scary Terry. He had to change teams. He was a part of this experiment, but they do have Travis Kelsey. The next lowest overall starting quarterback was Gardner Minshew the second at a 69. So he gave him the next two best wide receivers, one of them, Tyreek freaking Hill. The other one, Stephon Diggs. And he has Chark in the slot, Westbrook. This is probably the fastest wide receiver group in the league now. Oh yeah, and also George Kittle. He not too shabby either. Drew Locke was tied for the third lowest overall by a starting quarterback at a 70. So now he has 95 overall Julio Jones to throw to. Not to mention 94 overall Mike Thomas Sutton's in the slot Tim Patrick I mean just so much talent look at this Jerry Judy's your number five and you also have Darren Waller and Noah Fant oh and Albert so you have three of like the top four fastest tight ends in the league Sam Darn also got a lot of help as well okay he's getting Amari Cooper and Keenan Allen 293 overall wide receivers and you still have Jameson Crowder an amazing slot Rashad Perriman's speech, there's a lot of help at wide receiver now, along with Mark Andrews, the do-it-all 88 overall tight end. Jalen Hurts is a 71 overall, that's the fifth lowest for a starting QB, so he got him some help as well. The next two wide receivers were Mike Evans and Odell Beckham Jr. I would have loved to see this man in Philly. Hopefully it happens one day. And you know, technically Alshon's still on the roster. There's no more DJX, but we still have Rieger with a lot of speed, so Hunter Henry, Goddard, and Ertz, that, that's not bad either. The former Philadelphia Eagle Carson Wentz was tied for the sixth lowest overall by a starting quarterback at 72. So I helped him out by giving him Allen Robinson the second. And the Kalen Zacharias Metcalf. Not to mention he still has T.Y., Campbell, Pittman, Pascal, Hooper, joining Trey Burton and Jack Doyle, man. A nasty tight end group. Daniel Jones was next up at a 72 overall. So now he gets Calvin Ridley to throw to. Not to mention X-Factor Adam Thielen. And he still has Sterling Shepard Slayton. Oh yeah, and he also has Gronk. To pair with Evan Ingram, the Bears' best quarterback back was also a 72 overall Nick Foles so now he has scary Terry McLaurin along with Chris Godwin so they did miss out on Allen Robinson unfortunately but they still have Darnell Mooney oh yeah and Jared Cook along with Jimmy Graham a lot of talent on his team Dolphins had 274 overall quarterbacks so now they get to use Robbie Anderson and Tyler Lockett two guys with 93 plus speed they still have Devonte. they still have Jakeem I mean this team's looking a lot better Gasicki was actually the ninth best tight end and he was already on the Dolphins, so it's kind of weird how that worked out. And then finally, the 10th lowest overall starting quarterback was Jimmy Garoppolo at a 75 overall. So he gave him the next two wide receivers, which was Robert Woods and Cole Beasley. And they still have Sam, they still have Ayuk. I, I, this is going to help them a lot. They needed a lot of wide receiver help. They lose out on Kittle, but they still have TJ Hawkinson, very good young tight end, and also Jordan Reed. So the plan was to bring some sort of balance to the NFL, help out the poor teams in terms of quarterback talent by giving giving them a lot of talent to throw to. So hopefully, uh, you know, this can help these teams maybe make the playoffs. We'll see what happens. Leave your predictions in the comment section below. Which of these teams is going to improve the most? Let's go find out. Three of the quarterbacks we looked at were in the NFC East, and none of them won the division. Broncos win their division. They go 13-3 with Waller and company. The Colts made the playoffs at least. Jaguars kind of struggled 6-10. The Bears win their division at 8-8. Eight and eight. The Dolphins make the playoffs at 9-7. So our upgrades helped them, but definitely didn't help the Jets. And then the Niners go 8-8, eight and eight, barely miss out on the playoffs. Not a terrible season from Kyle Allen. I low-key thought he would be a little bit better though. Steven Sims led everybody in receptions when there is Devontae, Kelsey, and Nuke on the team. As for the Jaguars, Tyreek was the leading receiver. Kittle was right behind him. Stephon, number four, no touchdowns though. Gardner with a great touchdown interception ratio. Drew Locke went crazy. 34 touchdowns, only seven interceptions, 4,000 yards. 
Cortland Sutton and Julio both had a thousand yards. Look at Sutton, 14 touchdowns. Waller killed it. Even Michael Thomas. This is a nasty receiving court. I was kind of confused with the Jets, but that's just way too many interceptions from Sam Darnold, man. You got to take care of the football. Keenan almost had 100 receptions. Thousand yards, seven touchdowns. Same with Amari. Crowder did his thing. Same with Andrews. Not a bad season from Hurts. 29 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. Almost 4,000 passing yards. 11 touchdowns for Alshon. I know they have that connection. I'm telling you. Thousand yards as well. Evans was second. Henry right behind him. And Odell led everybody in receptions. Carson Wentz with a nasty season. This is what I hope he does this year. 34 touchdowns, only 14 interceptions, 4,000 passing yards. T.Y. with 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns. Allen Robinson with a nice season along with Austin Hooper and DK. Daniel Jones didn't do as well as I thought he would. Only 19 touchdowns to 12 interceptions. No 1,000 yard receiver. Thielen led everybody. Ridley behind him, then Shepard and then Gronk. That's what I like to see from folks. 4,600 yards, 31 touchdowns, only 12 interceptions. Scary Terry with 1,000 yards receiving. Cook right behind him, then Anthony Miller and then Godwin, who actually led the entire team in receptions. Tua with a very good season, 27 touchdowns, only 12 interceptions. Most of the touchdowns went to Devontae, who also had a 1,000 yard season. Gasicki had a great season. Anderson and Lockett both did their thing. And finally, Jimmy G with also a very good season. Cole Beasley, 1,000 yards, 14 touchdowns, 90 receptions. He definitely Definitely made a Pro Bowl. Robert Woods had a good season. Same with Hawkinson and Debo. So let's look at some of the awards. Offense, I, I tried to help them out. I, I helped them out as much as I could. Football team still ended up last. Tannehill wins MVP. I was hoping one of our lower overall guys could get a little higher, but the highest was Drew Locke at number five, Carson at number seven. So five of the teams that we upgraded made it to the playoffs, but there's only two of them left because the Giants lost their first round matchup, the Bears lost, and the Colts lost 28 to 10. So all we have left is the Broncos and the Dolphins. I think the fact that they were able to keep Devontae as their number three best wide receiver definitely helped out. That was Shaheen with the catch, but you know, they still kept Gesicki. So there was probably some chemistry there, you know, Matt Breed going crazy on the ground and a 74 overall is not bad especially with progression you have star development that's a big hit by Bradley maybe some of these teams need a running back help and not wide receiver help who knows that's a good dot right there just take what the defense gives them Gaskin with the first down Jesus what a drive we haven't even heard from the top two wide receivers that we added to this team right now to serving as decoys Vaughn in the backfield but Tua with the nice release Robbie Anderson very good wide receiver very underrated I don't know how he's not superstar Look at the plays he's making. Now, I can see why the Broncos are here because their run game was already nasty with Melvin Gordon, Phil Lindsey. But now their passing game is equally as good. Broncos, you cannot go three and out after that drive the Dolphins just had. But they sent the blitz. Lock over the middle. It's dropped. The Dolphins are looking good. 37-10. Tua with a flawless game. Run games for both teams were doing pretty decent. Then it slowed down. But Devontae, Anderson, Gasicki, even Lockett got going at some point. I don't know what was up with the Broncos, man. Julio, Waller, Michael Thomas. I was expecting a lot more from them. But now we root for the Dolphins to win it all. Unfortunately for the Dolphins, their run ended in the championship round. 34-17. They lost to the Chiefs, who ended up losing to the Saints in the Super Bowl. So our experiment kind of worked. I mean, would the Dolphins have gotten this far if we didn't give them all the talent we gave them? I don't think they would have, man. Hopefully y'all did enjoy this video. If you did, please slap a big old thumbs up on it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys on the next one.